Sonya, you know, the character that everybody recognizes as a redheaded bombshell buff babe that can kick some butt. Yes, her. Now for the upcoming film, which has been a nightmare with everything going on around that I've covered over the past two years with the reported race swap casting, which apparently isn't a thing anymore and all that. Uh, people have been wondering, okay, how woke is this going to be? And now they're saying that, <laughs> uh, they're slamming the source material saying it's too male gazy because I mean, being a beautiful woman, woman is male gazy. Uh, also there's apparently something wrong with men being attracted to women that, that I guess that's the premise of how male gaze is problematic. So now this is going to be very women empowered. Hmm. Wonder how that's going to go considering the high majority of the audience of Red Sonja fans are men. Interesting strategy trying to appeal to an audience that doesn't even consist of uh, your primary fan base. But alas, this is modern day. <laughs> this, like I said, oh my gosh. This whole film has been a development nightmare. I don't know why and how they keep making it worse. I just don't get it. And like I said, talking about the male gaze, that is just, that to me is speak for, oh, we want to make our female characters less attractive. How many times have we seen this in gaming, for example? Making female characters less beautiful, making them uglier, sometimes full-on ugly. They will have face scans, body scans of beautiful models and then purposefully make them ugly, like Mary Jane in Spider-Man 2, for example. And the argument against it is, oh, male gaze, male gaze. What? Let's just really unpack male gaze for a second. What does that even mean? It means men are attracted to her. That's a problem. Why? They want to act like it's just an objectification thing. There's more to women than just how we look. And yes, there is more to women than just how we look. But what's wrong with men finding women attractive? That is normal. Honestly, that's God's design. How come you don't hear people say the female gaze when talking about male characters that are attractive? Because apparently, uh, it, I don't know what it is, this hate of, against men being attracted to women. Apparently, that's a problem. A man can be attracted to a woman and still respect her and still see her as a human being. And like, like we've seen across social media recently with the whole attack on tomboys, which if, if you guys have seen that, I know this isn't nerd culture, so I haven't really covered it here, but I have on social media in general. The attack on tomboys with someone like Hannah Barron, who likes to hunt, fish, renovate houses with her dad, so on and so forth. She's a country girl. Uh, she's a tomboy. Um, and she's she's beautiful, but she also does all this stuff. And this Lebanese woman, uh, Muslim woman named Samira, just made a tweet about it, knocking her, saying, oh, she's not feminine. Why are you gay? Guys are basically gay if they like tomboys, which is just retarded to even say all that, which her tweets are private and now <laughs> because she got colossally ratioed. But it's like men find her attractive, but they care more about just that. It's the appeal of, wow, okay, she does all this cool stuff that are interest of mine as well. Um, so this whole implication, I, I use that example just to say this whole implication that the male gaze is just objectifying women and only seeing women as objects is absurd. Because a character like Red Sonia, our guy's fans of her only because she's beautiful no that's part of the appeal though it's like wow here's here's a woman who can kick butt and be awesome and be a babe like the whole package and for them to try to act like okay this new film it's it's women empowered this is for women 
women like that too. That is empowering for women, for us to see a character like that, obviously. And here we go. Timestamp it five minutes, so however many seconds. <laughs> so I talk about Lyra Croft again. One reason why I'm such a massive fan of Lyra Croft is it's like, oh, here is a strong, powerful female character. And she's beautiful. She's a boss babe, but not the not the feminist version of boss babe. She's an actual boss babe. She can kick butt. She's beautiful. She has it all. And when you look at male characters who are power fantasies, typically they're just very buff, very strong, um, and all that. And for a female power fantasy, being exceptionally beautiful is like, that's powerful for a woman. I think in general, though, being attractive gives you benefits in society. So people who are super, the more attractive these people are, hey, the more, the more benefits they're going to get in society. Now, some people who are exceptionally attractive can ruin things with having a terrible personality. But <laughs> even then, they can get away with more than people who aren't attractive. So it's just like, let's be real. If you want to talk about empowerment, attractiveness is empowering, right? And just the very nature of things, um, typically in this case, the male gaze in, in, in just by design, by how God created things. Men are attracted to women. Women are attracted to men. When those wires cross, and I know whatever, call me a bigot, I don't care. When those wires cross and you go against God's design and you have men attracted to men or women attracted to women in that way, Something's wrong. So either that is a social thing or something else. But let's be real. What is the normal? What is normal? What is how are people created to be attracted to the opposite sex? So a very normal thing of the male gaze of finding a woman attractive is being demonized. And one reason I feel that it is, is because pop culture has been infested with demonic ideology woke ideology inherently is demonic and i made a video about this like a year and a half ago or so you can check that out here on my channel just type in woke ideology is satanic and you'll see me explain everything about how the very pillars and things that woke ideology pushes is counter to the bible all right um so in this case, and what we're seeing with this, what we're seeing in our media and our entertainment is a lot of this woke ideology. So they do demonize things that are normal. They demonize things that are how God created humans to be. And some people will have a rebuttal and they're going to come back and be like, oh, but I was born this way. Or some people are born this way. We're born into sin, right? That does not... Everybody is going to have different sinful desires or struggles or battles. This is why it's so important to walk by the spirit. I know some people, I just want to see the nerd culture stuff. I don't need to see your Christian stuff. Okay. Okay. This is my channel. <laughs> so get over it or kick rocks. I don't know what else to tell you, but this is why I incorporate a lot of this kind of stuff into my videos is because we are in a spiritual warfare and we're in, like constantly like until Jesus returns and eliminates evil <laughs> we will be in spiritual warfare and so in things even like this even with movies even with video games any day-to-day -day society type things, there will be, uh, w there will be undertones, right? Right now, the world is Satan's playground until Jesus returns and he is corrupting so many things. So you can't tell me that something as large as Hollywood or as the gaming industry is not being meddled with by evil forces, 
It's not being meddled with by demonic influence. It is. And we've seen it rampant with this DEI stuff, with this sweet baby ink stuff. It's satanic. No other way around it. And so some people are just like, oh, it ain't always that deep. It is. It is. And some people say, oh, okay, well, this whole arguing against the male gaze, like, but that's not, it's not that deep. It's just jealous fat people. It's not so much, it's not anything more than that. Okay, I think to some degree, yeah, it is jealous fat people, but I think it goes so far beyond that. It is them, like I said, demonizing God's design. They see men being attracted to women as a bad thing because they want to fight against God's design. This is also why they're trying to shoehorn queer stuff in everything. All right. So let's go ahead and continue. Uh, <laughs> let's actually look at this article and dive into the meat of the conversation. So it says, according to its star, Matilda Lutz, the upcoming Red Sonja film will be seeking to abandon the male gaze orientation of the heroine's previous and original adventures in favor of a narrative that is overall very women empowered. Let me see Matilda Lutz. I forgot, and I've covered this stuff before, but I know they had the race swap, but didn't they change? Yeah, they did change. Okay. Uh, let me make sure it's all YouTube safe. It is um, Matilda Lutz. I think she's pretty. I th think she could work just fine for this, but just because an actress is pretty doesn't mean... They can't ruin the, they can't ruin it, right? They won't, it doesn't mean they won't uglify her for this role because we have seen pretty actresses be uglified for roles. Um, now, I don't know, I might get some backlash for this, but does she have to be this scantily glad? I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't be comfortable wearing something like this. So if they did want to make it a little less provocative, I wouldn't even be mad at that as long as she still looked very beautiful, very feminine, very appealing, um... You know, they, as long as they don't take away her beauty. But, yeah. I mean, to me, this is awesome. I don't think this is, I don't, I don't see this as a problem. I just don't. Um, but anyway, let's continue. Uh, Lutz, who audiences may best know for her starring roles in 2017's Revenge and 2021's Zone 414, offered this insight into the chainmail bikini-clad warrior's next cinematic outing while speaking to CBR's Tessa Smith ahead of the South by Southwest premiere of her new film, Magpie. Now, okay, and speaking of the outfit, because I did say, hey, I'm, I don't think it has to be this revealing, um... But I think if they were to go with like that full armor chain mail and it's covering absolutely everything, I think that would detract from Red Sonya's trademarks. I think it would detract from showing just how, okay, this is a strong feminine. She has a very muscular physique that emphasizes her feminine qualities. So yeah, I think it should be a two piece. Show some abs, you know? Show some hip, all that stuff. I'm not against that. Um, but I think there's a way, I think there's a way to do it. I think there's a way that, you know, if they want a PG-13 audience here and to not be too, too provocative for someone to take their 13-year-old kids to watch or something, um, but to me, even this, this looks fine. I don't, I think this looks fine. But anyway, let's continue. Um, pressed by Smith for any and all information she could tease about the film, the actress asserted, so what I can tell about Red Sonja is that the first ones 
and the comics were made with a very male gazed orientation. This is a completely different story and it's a very woman empowered, uh, which I loved about the script. So this isn't women empowered? Make it make sense. This is the same argument that they talk about Lara Croft. So that's not women empowered? A beautiful, strong woman? Isn't that inherently women empowered? I don't, it's like, you already know something's going to be a failure whenever they start knocking the source material. Weird, weird. If you know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I think this looks great. This looks awesome. Uh, she's definitely got a physique here that she worked really hard for. Um, I mean, in this case, you know, she could have acquired that just by the nature of what she does. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I don't see anything objectifying or uh, minimizing her as a person or a character with this outfit. I... I think that they could pull it off for the for the movie, especially if the woman, if the actress is actually getting in Red Sonia's shape, right? Because let's be real, that does make a difference. If you get a woman who hasn't been training, hasn't been lifting weights, hasn't developed a physique, such an impressive physique like this, and you put her in an outfit like that, it is going to look different uh, than someone who, in this case, uh has worked out and is very strong um so part of the nature of this outfit is to show off her strength and intent is everything you know when I talk about because I've talked about the bible and my beliefs biblically um intent when it comes to outfits and stuff like that is uh is what's important so this isn't meant to objectify women or make women just only about like a sexual thing. This is showcasing her strength. So it's not like some OnlyFans girl. This is, this is strength and beauty. All right, so unfortunately for friends uh, or fans of the crimson-haired heroine, this is not the first time that this next Red Sonia has thrown up such a red flag regarding its narrative direction. Exactly, I made videos about that. They were going to race swap her at one point. Uh, it's just been a nightmare. Speaking to Variety in honor of her being ranked fifth on the 2023 entry of their annual 10 screenwriters to watch list, the film's scribe, the Witcher Blood Origin writer Tasha Ho, Huo, Ho, I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> teased that the Red Sonia would provide audiences with both stories of great female friendship as well as a glimpse of how women uniquely survive out in the world. Oh my gosh, I'm already sensing the cringe. I'm already sensing the, oh yeah, the, the what is it called? The Bechtel test? <sighs> okay. Oh, yeah. See, there was an old Red Sonja movie, too. Let me pull that up. Because, especially since talking about outfit. Let's see how they did it back then, because I haven't watched it. Um, movie. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get an idea of what her outfit looked like. Yeah, see? This is, this is awesome, honestly. So, like I was saying with... Here in my big head is covering this. I think this is great. Like I was saying, they don't have to make the outfit exactly as scantily clad as the comic. And you can still make it beautiful, right? Because there is going to be some translation differences seeing something in a comic versus real life. I still think they could pull it off with that comic look. But... You know, if they did want to make this where, again, 13-year-old boys, like, people wouldn't feel uncomfortable taking their 13-year-old boys to watch it. The outfit looks good. She looks beautiful. She looks strong. I think that's great. That's fantastic. All right. All right. I'm, I'm here for it. 
Uh, so anyway, let's continue. Uh, however, despite the film offering such a little bit darker take, its director, MJ Bassett, has confirmed that it will abandon perhaps one of the most harrowing elements of her 1985 silver screen adventure, her, her SA by a gang of bandits. Okay. Um, I have no interest in fictional women who use grape as an engine of motivation, the director told The Hollywood Reporter's Scott Johnson in January 2023. It's not a strong motivation. She's just a human being in the world of femininity. Um, kind of have mixed feelings on this. I mean, they can't, her overcoming that, and especially if she's killing her, <laughs> her uh, abductors, uh, that can be, that can be like, oh, what a boss. She overcame that uh, situation, but I do, I do think that that can be removed because that kind of stuff, I don't know. Sometimes that I, I, I'm not even gonna lie. I do find that uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to watch, I wouldn't want to watch a movie of a, of someone like Red Sonia, uh, getting graped. I, uh, I, I don't want to see that. I, I can't agree with that take. Uh, they don't have to, they, now they can still have the bandits perhaps have that intention, but I just think when it comes to filming something like that, um, oh, that's where you got to balance implication versus anything else, especially with how creepy a lot of people are, uh, in society and uh what they will do with that kind of material yeah um that's kind of my take on that anyway further though details as to red sonia's exact plot currently remain under wraps according to a summa summation of bassett's words provided by johnson the film will be an allegory for more existential questions around the survival of the species in the face of climate change ah Wow! Wow! This is directed by Bassett, whose filmography includes both Solomon Kane and Silent Hill Revelation, and starring Lutz as the titular heroine and the Umbrella Academy actor Robert Sheehan as her nemesis, uh, Dragon the Magnificent. Red Sonia is currently set to slice its way across the battlefield sometime in 2024. Ah, uh, that's the thing with these kind of things, right? With these kind of things, I think there is room for some nuance on interpretations, right? If it's like, okay, you know, like in this case here, let's make her outfit like this. Um, she looks awesome. <laughs> let's make her outfit like this, you know? I get, I get it. There's some room. There's some wiggle room there. I'm not a, a red. I'm not versed on Red Sonia, so I can't tell you what her older outfits uh, looked like or anything like that. But hey, I think this is rad and it's beautiful. It's yeah, I think it's cool. So I think there is room for stuff like that. But clearly, in this case, and what they've expressed is they are against men being attracted to women. This whole male gaze argument. So. Uh, for that reason, that I that that wording, it wouldn't surprise me if they really try to make her look, uh, the actress look uglier than she actually is, and all that stuff. Give her an outfit that doesn't accentuate her feminine form, uh, which you know, while the 1985 movie did have an outfit that looks different, uh, and that is, uh, that does cover her up a little bit more, it still accentuates her feminine form and that's 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 the big takeaway here um but yeah and then the climate change talk all this kind of stuff um hey I I think removing the the grape stuff I have no issue with that uh but clearly in this case with the climate change with the anti male gaze aka she can't be too beautiful um, I don't think that this is coming from a good place. I think this is coming to from a place of of forcing their ideologies on the viewers. So anyway, there you have it. 
for my take, let me know, agree, disagree, what have you in the comments below. Um, and yeah, if you want to catch me on my Bible channel, you can watch me at Bible Time with Melanie Mac, and then my streams at YouTube, Twitch, well, Twitch for a little bit at least until they ban me again, and kick at Melanie Mac. Thank you all again for watching. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom.